This is a short video about how to create a project with ISE Webpack. Uh, I think I'm using version 14.7. Um, this is for a Physics 332 at Winona State University. Um, so ISE Webpack is ancient and I'm using it because I've got an old Spartan 3E board. Um, and, uh, and here's a note, if you're running Windows 8, um, it takes some monkeying around to get the Webpack to work. Um, strange things happen, like it can't open files. So let's make a new project. Uh, let's call it an example. And we're using a basis uh, two board. And I put all of my designs in a folder for clarity. I could describe it, I guess. Um, for now, I'm going to have a top level file, which is a schematic. So uh, in here, you need to specify the specific parameters of the board. Um, so uh, if you have Digilent Adept running, uh, it will identify the board, so basis 2, assuming the board is plugged in. And it will also give you a, a specific part number, so XC3S250E. So that is the FPGA that's on the board. So you want to match that. And you see that I did. So here's one with 500,000 gates. Here's one with uh, 1.2 million. Um, and the package will also uh, be a source of problems. Um, the easy way to do it is just to make your design, make a bit file. If you have the wrong package, try another one. That's kind of an embarrassing solution. Or else you can read the documentation. Um, but this is somewhat cryptic. So once you have the parameters set, you create a project. And then once you have a project, let's add a source. Let's make it a new source. We're going to use a schematic entry. Uh, and this is going to be the main um, schematic. And that might be spelled correctly. Uh, and we're going to add it to the project. If you just create a new file, it may not be added to the project. So that can be a drag. So um, you notice there are many windows. So here we have uh, different um, ways we can edit files. I don't know if that makes sense. So here's the design in total. Uh, here we have things we can do to files. Down here we have messages. And this is kind of like a palette where we can do things. So I'm going to make it bigger. And let's make uh, a simple gate. So what I want to do is invert a signal. So uh, I'm looking for INV. And this is probably the stupid way to. Uh, go through. I, I don't need to look through all symbols. I could just look through um, logic. And if I had looked through logic, this would have popped right up. So let me persuade you that that's true. So this is a families of gates. So I want an inverter. Okay, here it is. There's an inverter and there's an inverter. So I, I'm going to make a very simple buffer and I'm going to wire those two gates together. And this is not a wonderful editor. I mean, it works. It's hard to see, especially if you're old like me and you can't see very well. Uh, once you have something wired up, let's see, let's do some more wiring. So this is going to go down. This is going to go over. This will make sense in a minute. Once you have your design wired up, you need to interface with the real world. So I'm going to interface right there. So that's a pin that's going in. There's a pin that's going out, and there's a pin that's going out. So now you're wondering, what does this circuit do? Let's rename it. So one of the pins coming in is going to be A, and I'm going to actually say that it's coming in just to be uh, clear when I look at this in the future. Double clicking it brings up that options bar, which I don't care about. And I'm going to call this um, B, which is coming out. Uh, if you think about it, this will also be A, right? Because the signal is inverted twice and the inversions cancel. And this uh, will be not A coming out. And there we go. So that's my design. It's pretty simple. Obviously, you can make more fantastic things than this with your FPGA. Uh, so now if we go over to this design tab, uh, you see the file here. Um, this play button 
uh, implements the top module. So if you're thinking about in terms of programming, it compiles. So I'm going to push this and it will run for a while. And so in a minute, um, in a, so it's still running. Um, it goes through many compile states. I've heard that, whoops, if you, um, if you have a solid state drive or if you have all these design files locally, uh, it will run faster. So that's one way of speeding it up. Also, if you pay money for a Xilinx programmer, instead of using um, the free one, uh, I think there's something about using more than one core simultaneously. The Webpack works, but it is maybe crippled a little bit. So at any rate, uh, it says completed successfully, and there's no more spinning pinwheel up above. Whoops, I don't want to move this window. What I want to do is make it bigger. So you can drag windows and make them bigger. Um, debugging is interesting. Um, and the warnings, look, no warnings. That's great. Um, uh, and maybe we'll talk about debugging later on in the term. Um, so at any rate, uh, here we are. Let's make this smaller and then run. So the next thing we have to do is interface A and B and not A with the real world. The way to do that is to click on this. So that is your top level design with the three boxes. And we need to add uh, a new source. That new source needs to be a constraints file, UCF. Um, you could call it pinouts if you want. And, uh, um, oh, .UCF. And Digilin actually provides you with one of these for the board. So um, anyway, just a minute. So you click Next, you click Finish, and look, there you are. All right, one minute. So how do we figure out how to map those pins? So I remind you, we have the schematic. We want to make the pins make sense. So one way of doing that is to make a pinouts.ucf file. What does that mean? Well, um, so if you look at a picture of the board, so I just took a picture, you see that this switch is switch number seven, this switch is switch number six, this switch is switch number five. So every component has a label. And it has a label that is intelligible in English, so switch five. And you also have a label that um, corresponds to the actual pin, so E2, N3. There's not really a pattern to how these are all laid out. So N3 is what I'm going to use for an input. And if you look right here, the light is poor. G1 is LED 7. P4 is LED 6. So I'm going to use switch 7, which is pin N3 as an input, and LED 7 and LED 6, pins G1 and P4 as outputs. So what does that look like? Well, um, here's the UCF that I downloaded from Digilent. Uh, Windows won't um, open it because Windows uh, uh, makes strange life choices. Uh, but if you change this into a text file, this is what a uh, UCF file looks like. What you see is a general pattern. There's some name that's somewhat intelligible, so EPP weight. And then there's a pin. And so the pattern is net, name, location equals, and then another pin number. Uh, and I'm not sure what this bank stuff means, and it doesn't really matter. So what we really care about is, look here, switch seven, location N3. So this is the rough pattern I want. So I'm just going to copy this so I remember and get rid of this. And we don't need this anymore. So here we are. So, um, so I said that A in was going to be pin N3, super. And then why not use copy and paste? And A, let's see, I think it was B out. And 
not a out. So um, let's see. No, maybe pin P4. P4. And uh, uh, be careful with case. Um, the reliability here is uh, hit or miss. Also, um, there are typesetting conventions. This will not compile because you're missing a semicolon. Um, if you want, I can persuade you that this is true. So we saved the design. Now we're going to compile it. And I'll probably pause the recorder again. Oh, that's not the recorder. This is the recorder. So you see that um, although there is a typo, uh, it did complete successfully. So now if I want to generate a programming file, it's this one right here, and you can run it. So that finished with no errors and no warnings, even though there's a typo. In the UCF. This will be interesting. I don't, I don't know what will happen. Um, so now I'm going to go back to Adept and I'm going to browse around for my programming file. So this is the file that will program my FPGA. So it's inside of the folder and it's the only thing that's .bit. If notice that if you if you look in this directory, there's a lot more than this file. It's just apply the filter. So if I open, I get this message because it doesn't matter because this design is instantaneous. It's not really clocked. It doesn't matter. And now I'm going to program. Yes, I really want to program. It's programming. All right, I'm going to turn on my device. Hey, it works. I wish you guys could see a video. Just a minute. So here's my design. I've got my basis 2 board, I've got an LED lit up, and I've got a switch. So here's the switch, which is my input. When I switch it back and forth, the light switches. It's great. It's just what I think it should be. Notice when it's low, the LED on the right is high. Also, note that this design is only programmed until I kill the power. I turn the switch off and turn it back on. Now the functionality is not present because I've erased the design.